Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel, and thanks for logging on. Today, we are discussing the scintillating Laurent Ferrier Gallet Micro Rotor. Stainless steel with sunburst ice blue dial. You can see this three-day automatic winding double direct impulse escapement timepiece and purchase it on our website. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you enjoy these videos, and please click on the card in the upper right-hand corner of the screen at any time during this video to see our full sales listing for this watch with additional accessories included in the sale, high-resolution images for your desk top and naturally complete pricing details for this Laurent Ferrier Gallet Micro Rotor in stainless steel. Now, while steel might be the case material, the headliner is the color, and the color is serendipitous. Sunburst blue, ice, a, a chilling visage to match a beautiful white polished case. There is nothing about this watch I don't like. The combination of color and forms and technical sophistication and ergonomics, they all satisfy. You can see on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, this 40 millimeter round case is easy to wear. From lug to lug, it's reasonably compact too at 47.1 millimeters. Across the wrist, you could wear this watch on a wrist as small as 13 and a half centimeters in circumference. So the largest possible range of enthusiast wrists will be able to partake. It's not thick. 11.3 millimeters thick, yes, but with a dramatically sloped domed bezel and polished sloped case flank, it will slide underneath any dress cuff. But you won't want this one to vanish underneath your sleeve just because the aesthetic is sensational. Now, ergonomically, there's more to a watch than just the case. As you can see, the lugs are relatively sharply downturned. So if you are borderline for wearing the watch, let's say your wrist really is 13 and a half centimeters in circumference, the fact that the lugs melt away and curve around the wrist rather than flare straight out as they would on something like a galley square means that it will look more home on your wrist, even if you're borderline size-wise. The strap is a dark brown, small rectangular scale alligator leather with a monotone stitch and folded edges. The underside is a very supple suede style calfskin, which is a thoughtful addition and very comfortable. Uncommon, we should see it more often. The pin buckle is simple but nicely sculpted, so it's not a default design. All of high polish, it's a classical form, but heavily contoured to make it distinctive. Again, just a sign that the details have been sweated with this watch. Now the case is simple, but it does have a number of strong elements of definition. The lugs, because the watch is not huge, the lugs don't have to be pared down or cropped in decently to make the watch fit. So they can flare down and away with a substantial sculptural beauty all of their own. They unite the mid case with a flowing continuous arc. All of high polish, you can see that the curvature is a sophisticated compound curved profile, and there is a very flush fit between the flank of the bezel and the case band. So you see the line that demarcates the two, and that gives the watch a little bit of a creased masculine and edge to it, but it also ensures that the sensuous feminine flow of the mid-case isn't broken up because the bezel and the case profile match so perfectly. You'll note from this angle that the sapphire is generously domed and curved, and underneath there is that sunburst ice blue dial. It's handsome, it's nuanced, and it's reactive. In the warm, diffused light of my light box, you can see that it's never the same watch from any two angles. You can see the light and the reflections and the glint and the gleam moving about on the center dial as well as the sub-register. In direct sunlight, it is an explosive presence, so be prepared. Now, the watch is subtle, but you should have no trouble reading the time. The contrast between the polished white gold Asagai or spear style hands and the dial base is surprising surprisingly clear, and it has a sector style hour track outboard with a mini sector and concentric steps to the sub-registers for constant seconds at 6 o'clock. There are applied white gold dart style indices for 9 and 3 with a double index at 12, and then there's a very subtle railroad style minutes track outboard. The dial is simply sensational, and the best way to get the full benefit of this dial's beauty and the full effect of its gleam and its glint is to go on our website and actually look at our listing for this watch. Now, the watch watch on the backside is just as spectacular. FBN 229.01, this is a collaboration between BNB Concept, friends of Laurent Ferrier, and Laurent Ferrier and his son Christian. So it's a all hands on deck effort. BNB originally was a company that went out of business in 2010. 
Barbasini and Nivas left Boutet, who stayed with Hublot and founded the MP division. Barbasini and Nivas went on to found Fabrique du Temps in 2012, purchased by LVMH. They continue to help their friends in the industry and their clients throughout work on high-end movements such as this. So a collaboration between Fabrique du Temps, Barbasini and Nivas, and the Ferrier family in-house in Geneva. The result is spectacular. And by the way, that's why the uh, the moniker for the movement is FBN 229, Ferrier, Barbasini, Nivas. 35 joules, automatic winding, 72 hour power reserve, beating away at 21,600 vibrations per hour. Let me see if I can get a little bit closer, and I can, just a little bit. The watch movement is as intellectually beautiful as it is aesthetically attractive. It is a double direct impulse escapement. It actually features nickel phosphorus escape wheels that are liga etched from a solid, and then the result is used in direct impulse against the balance with a silicon oscillator locking and unlocking each escape wheel. The difference between this and a Swiss lever is that rather than having an escape wheel, a lever, and then a balance, the escape wheel directly impulses the balance to reduce power consumption, reduce parasitic losses of friction in the system, and it extends the power reserve while also improving timing stability and timing accuracy. It's effectively the natural escapement originally envisioned by historic watch watchmakers such as Breguet adapted for a wristwatch application. It does feature a slight overcoil profile to help the watch meet outstanding chronometric precision tolerances in six positions, that is precision timing without respect to gravity. So in any position, thanks to the overcoil architecture, the watch will keep excellent time, excellent and consistent time with a small delta or difference between each position. So you have that overcoil, but then you have confirmation on the bridges that the watch has in fact been adjusted in six positions, which is extraordinary because chronometer standard is five positions. The winding system uses two poles and a guilloche cut winding mass with a jeweled staff. So you have jewels on both sides and a staff in between holding the rotor, and then the Paul system locks and unlocks the winding system as it rotates. The result is very smooth, and it's almost entirely inaudible. It is a very refined system. Its only real rival for smoothness is Rolex's perpetual system with its dual reversing wheels made out of Teflon. Now you'll also note that the decoration is exquisite. In the best standards of Geneva, you can see from this angle, the richly textured Cote de Genève not stamped, applied traditionally with an abrasive wheel, perfectly aligned from bridge to bridge, a tight and even perlage pattern across the base plate as you can see. You also note that when I turn the watch flush to the camera, everything that goes flat black, like blacked out, not darker, but black, is in fact optically smooth black polish, the higher s standard of optical finish you'll find in watchmaking. You'll also note that everything that glints and gleams, like the edge of the bridges, is mirror polished anglage, big, rounded, executed by hand, not by some sort of milling machine. It is so large, the anglage arcs on these bridges, that you can actually inspect and enjoy it without resort to a loop. You'll also note that there is a sharp cleft or interior angle at the center of this bridge bearing the barrels in the center wheel, and that sharp interior angle is one of no fewer than five. You'll find the other four inside the skeletonized cock for the balance itself. This is incredibly difficult to do, and you'll note that the, the cock supporting the balance is both black polished and graced with four interior angles, both incredibly difficult to achieve. You'll also note that the watch is, in every respect, a contemporary chronometer grade watch. Though it is not COSC certified, it does make those standards of precision. The only element that I would change is the fact that it does not have a hacking function. So while there is no stop seconds, rest assured, when set the watch will keep perfect and accurate time. Also, keep in mind, 30 meters water resistant with a snapback case. It's beautifully visible, but it is not the kind of watch that you would want to take anywhere near water. Finally, you may want to consider the Galet Boreal series with the loomed dial if you absolutely positively have to be able to see your watch at night. But in every other respect, this is pretty close to the perfect watch, and very few would argue the point. Decide for yourself on our website.